My name is Kanisha Hart and I am a survivor of 16 pedophiles. From the age of three, I was molested by 16 people from three to 12 years old. At three years old, my mama used to go boost. She would go steal with her friend and she would leave me with this man named Curtis. Curtis used to make me give him oral sex at three. The next encounter was with Mr. Holmes. My mama used to run the streets and leave me at Mr. Holmes' house, which was her friend, and he used to make me also give him oral sex. The next person was a teenage girl used to take me up under her house and get on top of me and punch me. When my mom would leave me with her friends, she would either be stealing, I never knew what she was stealing, I never saw merchandise. But I know she went to jail when I was maybe four or five and I had to go stay with her first cousin. My daddy later on in life told me after I had my first baby, he came to the hospital and told me that he used to pimp my mama. So from that time, and I was 13, I had my first baby at 13, from that time until pretty much I was 40 years old, I marinated on that with everything else that I had been through and how many people from her hands had done violated me. And I put two and two together and said, I asked myself, was my mama pimping me? And because also, why did my daddy feel the need? I needed to know that. Which he did not know of any molestations. He just knew of my cousin getting me pregnant at 12, which he was like two years older than me, my, my cousin. And that was in Georgia. And he knew about the person who raped me in the church. He didn't know about nothing else. And not until I was 32 years old did I sit down, write down everyone's name. And if I didn't remember their name, I wrote down the location and counted the individuals who had done violated me. See, my mama died when I was eight and she was just 28. So originally my dad and them tried to get me when my mama died, but my maternal grandma did not want that to happen. So once my mom, brother Michael, had done started messing with me and I went to school and told HRS, DCF, they came and pulled me and my little sister out of the home. My sister didn't have any family other than my grandma, so they asked my daddy, could she come over until they find a placement for her? And they let her come over, and eventually she left, and I stayed with my dad up until a certain point. Once I started living with my daddy, besides only one encounter happened from one person from my paternal side. And that was my Uncle Joe, when I would sit out or he would have me sit next to him, he would put his hand down for me to sit on it. Now, mind you, that was my granddaddy, sister, husband, and her name was Aunt Louise. And she was a caterer. She would come down there and cook for my grandma. And when the ingredients was needed, they would send my Uncle Joe to the store and they would always ask me, do I wanna ride with my uncle joe i don't remember ever since i've known of him being in my life as a baby just start off doing me like that it and it started after so many rides to the store then he started to approach me like that it didn't just off the rip happen like that over the years when i told my grandma i put her down to her ear to whisper in her ear to let her know what he was doing and she told me do not tell my granddaddy stay away from him and she never sent me again nowhere with him ever the plethora of 16 people have been from the hands of people on my maternal mama side a plethora of so after uncle joe i wanted to say it was the pastor of my grandma church my maternal grandma church, she would send him, my grandma would have to be to work three, four o'clock in the morning. She was a supervisor janitorial at UNF, University of North Florida. And she would have to be to work two or three o'clock in the morning. And on her days that she was at work, he would come over and fix things that maybe the hot water heater, the washing machine, whatever. 
right? When we would be there. And he would play up under my clothes and leave me money. My sister was around when the pastor of my grandma church, it probably wasn't in the same vicinity, maybe about a year or two off because she used to stay with my grandma. I mean, she used to stay with my mama's sister in Orlando. She told me that he had been doing the same thing to her when she would come to our grandma house and leave her money too. I was young when the pastor was, and me and my sister was four years apart and I'm the oldest. So she had to be young. My mama stepdaddy molested her. She ran away to my daddy and they had me and my sister. That's all that I know about. But I'm sure I'm sure it happened because so many people, pedophiles that was in my circle, like that's what making me think that my mama had her hands in. It's not making no other sense. And I think my grandma was sending the pastor to mess with me and my little sister because when we told her, she didn't so-called believe us. So she said, but me and my sister came up to the conclusion she probably was messing with him because she was money hungry. I don't know why, but I had told my daddy I hated him. We weren't getting along for some reason. I, I think I was more so afraid of my daddy. I didn't know that then, but I told him I hate him, and he sent me to Georgia on my maternal grandma's side, my grandma's sister, which was my great aunt, but I called her grandma, <laughs> took me to Georgia, and for me to live, I guess, because I couldn't tell him why I hated him, which I, I really didn't know until later that I really didn't hate my dad. I was just afraid of him. He was intimidating. He was serious. You know, he didn't play the radio. And so with that being said, that's where my oldest daughter came from, which was my cousin. And that's when I got pregnant with my oldest daughter from and his uncles, four of his uncles, have did what the rest of them did pretty much the people i was my daddy took me to georgia to they was angry at me once they found out so originally i knew i had a period but i didn't really have a consumption fully because i was just 12. i don't recall having sex ed education as of yet i don't i was never told why the period was there i just knew to expect a period. When I had my period at 10, I told my grandma and she did what was needed and showed me what I was supposed to do, right? So when I got pregnant at 12 in Georgia, I noticed my period went on, but I didn't know I was pregnant. I just noticed I wasn't getting a period. And my grandma would give me allowance and I would go to the health store and get burgundy dye to make it look like I had a period and just put my drawers in the dirty clothes for her to wash because she was washing my clothes. And apparently that didn't work because later they had asked me, was I pregnant? And I was like, no, but this was after I stood in the shower and tried to hold my stomach in and could not hold my stomach in for nothing. And I put two and two together. And so, but I still didn't tell them that. And when they later asked me that afterwards, I just denied it, and they took me to go get a test, and I was pregnant. Then they shot me to Atlanta to get an abortion, and I was five months pregnant, and they said, uh-uh, she got to have it. I'm too far along. And then they politely drove me right back down here to my paternal grandma and my daddy. When I ran to the den, my grandma was asleep. My uncle opened the door for me. I ran straight to the den. She was asleep. She just woke up out her sleep when I shook and said, she woke up out her sleep and said, you pregnant? And I shook my head. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And she came to the living room and then they just started, she, 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 ha, 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 this what she did. Me. <laughs> yeah. With my grand, when I got back with my grandma and my daddy, they had, without me knowing, came up with a solution to put me in a pregnant home to have my baby and give her up for adoption. And me being in the pregnant home, nobody will know, no family come over, nobody will see me there pregnant, and no neighbors would know in the neighborhood, you know. And when I saw my baby, I instantly said, I'm keeping her. And that's what I did. 
Well, because I was so concerned about where I'm going to live with my baby, I didn't really start. It was in my mind locked for me to go back to, but I didn't really start marinating on that until I was good and grown, maybe maybe my mid-20s, you get what I'm saying? And started putting things together, started putting the pieces together. But once I left the hospital, he came to Buckner Manor and asked me one more time, why did I hate him? And I told him I, I didn't know, I couldn't tell him because I don't know. And he just fell down and started break, breaking down crying and was like, let's go home. And he took me home with my baby. But technically, I was living with his mama, my grandma. And she would always ask me, <laughs> with the baby and my aunt, you know how to, you know what you're doing? You know how to raise a baby? You you know how to feed a baby? You know how to burp a baby? <laughs> you know how to change a baby? And I would be like, <laughs> I would be like, yeah. <laughs> and she said, okay. And my baby was around one years old. And I heard her on the phone with her friend. And she was bragging about, she used to call me, my nickname, Rhoda. That's what she called me. And she named me that. And then she used to tell her friends, I can count on one time how many times I done changed Rhoda, baby. She was bragging because I was always on top of, I already knew I was young and everybody was so concerned. So I just vowed that I would do my best. It was hard because I was my daddy only child and once my baby came they used to say oh and I was spoiled <laughs> and they used to tell me oh you don't get nothing no more the baby get everything <laughs> but it didn't it didn't matter because you know they still looked out for me but it was things that I really needed nothing too spectacular that I wanted unless I really just accomplish you know something and then i get a gift or my 16th birthday i'll get something big yeah but for the most part <laughs> i don't know i guess it's, it was bittersweet because i ended up with three children by the time i was 18 and mentally no one knew what i was going through because i stayed on top of me having to be there for my children but from three to 40 years old, I marinated and contemplated and I asked God why and <laughs> just lived, I guess, mentally in a dark place. Once I found out I was pregnant, now this is the second go time, I'm clearly knowing what's going on this time around. I'm not fooled at all, right? And I'm beginning to show and told my grandma, my paternal grandmother that what happened when it happened she called the police and they had an open case and the person went to jail he pled guilty got over 300 hours of community service five years probation and time served from whenever he went to jail initially to whenever he was released and naturally he had to be registered as a sex offender which you can find him right now my oldest daughter was told by a family member who her daddy was and they've been talking ever since on and off not consistently so yes yeah, she know the entire journey she is disgusted but how she feel about her daddy and all of that how that happened i honestly couldn't tell you my healing journey started three years ago when I fasted for the first time. And I did three days without starting over, nothing but water and worshiping, praying, watching Christ content and speaking in the Holy Spirit. And, and that's where it started at. Well, now the second, I guess, part of the healing journey is going pretty good. He kept telling me I needed to make a YouTube channel showing my face and telling my story. And he said, what you gonna do now? And I said, I'm gonna start it. January 2023, because I didn't have any choice. I had to go ahead and be obedient and do what I had to do because this is gonna be my real life changing blessing, I believe. First and foremost, it's going to help 
everyone on who reaches my videos reach is going to help them and they they healing process and the things they done been through the that you know the same like me so but what i would tell someone who have been through what i have is that we are all here for a reason and while we're here we have a journey to go through at the end of that journey is your destination so when you go through your journey, meaning living the life that God intended you to live, whether it's horrific or whether it's magnificent, the, the journey you went through have a purpose. Everyone have a purpose. So the real reason you're here, whatever your journey is, even though it hurt, it was necessary for whatever God purpose is for you to go through that. With the supporters I have, from my platform has helped me in this short period of time tremendously because <sighs> it's been some genuine compassionate people. Some have been through what I've been through, men and women, and some haven't. The encouraging words that it's been said to me. Soon as I read a comment, I just start breaking down. We all know it takes a village. They say it takes a village to raise a child. And I say it's too bad the village can't be trusted. So even though we know everyone is not a child, molester, or pedophile, it's sad you have to treat everyone like that with your child. Because you just never know who is who. You get what I'm saying? And with that being said, that's the first thing. Even if you have to leave your child, you know, people need babysitters. People have jobs. People have careers. But if you have to leave your child with someone from the moment they start speaking or able to talk, it's just very important to set the foundation of starting the foundation right there as soon as they can comprehend anything about their body parts started right then. I don't care how young it is, and we know our children, one, two years old, we always ask them, point to your eyes, where your nose, where your mouth, start there. So that way, when you do have to leave your child with someone, and you don't have to see any signs, just make it a routine to ask your child, have anyone, and while you're showing them and telling them that no one is supposed to be in those areas and you're constantly asking them at the same time, then it's very easy to prevent and or catch in the beginning.